Well, let's start with the if statement. Commonly used, frequently used, and throughout the whole of this advanced title, we'll pretty much be using it all the time. So it's important that we get the mechanics right, the semantics right, the syntax right. The if statement in its simplicity is listed as equals if, open brackets, your condition, so your criteria that's going to be checked effectively, and then followed by two commas. First comma precedes what to happen if this condition is true. The second comma then precedes what to happen if this condition is false. So regardless of the complexity of your ifs, when we get to double ifs and nested ifs, the syntax is still the same. If, check a condition, what to happen if it's true, what to happen if it's false. And you'll see if we look just slightly lower down in this document, which is actually in your working folder. This is the VB syntax. If, condition, then, what to do if it's true, else, what to do if it's false, end if. So effectively, this end if is your closing bracket, that bit there. This then is that comma, this else is that comma. So effectively, the syntax is pretty much the same, whether you're working in VB or whether we're working as we will be within the Excel cells themselves. So this is the syntax we misuse at all times. So let's go see that in action. So using the if file, which is in your working folder, we have a number of sheets. First of those is pass hyphen fail, and we can use the if in here to check whether this score here is actually higher than the pass rate. Now we can either build the pass rate into the formula, or we can fix the pass rate into a cell up here. So let's do that. Pass rate is 40%. So then in here we can use our if, so that's equals if, open brackets. And you'll see that Excel tries to help you out by repeating the three sections. So logical test, value of true, value of false. Notice that they're in square brackets, meaning that they're optional. So the actual formula itself only needs a logical test Without any values in the true and false sections, Excel will actually simply just output the word true or the word false. So our logical test is, is that cell there greater than or that cell there? If so, then that's a pass. If we want the exact text to appear on the screen, that must be in speech marks, comma. So that's my else. If it's not greater than that, then it's a fail. Close brackets and return. And we find we've made an error. Do you want to accept the correction proposed below? If you look at the correction and look at what I've typed, the error is that I have failed to close the speech marks here around that fail. So yes, thank you. And Mike is a pass. Before we can copy and paste that formula down or drag it down with the fill handle, we just need to fix the reference to the pass cell by taking some dollars in. Then we can take that formula down. So we see that Mary's failed. Oh dear. John's passed, Julian's passed, Sally's failed, and Guy's failed. That's making use of our if. If that cell there is greater than that cell there, then we have two options, and there are only ever two options, true or false. What to happen if the condition is met, and what to happen if the condition is not met. And then we just simply copy the formula down after fixing the reference using our dollars to this cell here. Otherwise, when we drag the formula down, obviously it wouldn't work. So that's using the if to pull out text results. Let's use it in the each sheet here to effectively negate what could be an error. What we want to do here is work out how many of something each child's got. So in the first line there, it's how many cakes have they got each. So that equals the quantity of cakes divided by the number of children. They get three each. And we can quite happily take that formula to the bottom. However, you'll see there the toys, there are no children wanting toys. And our result is a divo because we cannot divide by zero. So let's go back in time and make this formula check to see if there are some children in the children's cell. So equals if, open brackets, that cell there equals zero, then. So if that cell equals zero, then I don't want to carry out the divide. I actually want nothing to happen. So we'll stick a double set of speech marks in, followed by a comma to take me into the false bit. So the false bit here is checking whether C2, in this case, is not zero. So if it's one, two, three, or bigger, it will then carry out the divide. Close off our if, and we get the same result. But the difference will be when we drag this down on this cell here. Notice there is nothing in that cell. There's no awful divo. But the formula is still there. It's still checking whether this is equal to zero. If it is, then actually put nothing in the cell. If it isn't, then do the divide. 
if we actually decide that four children do want to have some toys, it will carry out the formula. But if none go for the oranges, then we see an empty cell. Formula hasn't moved, formula's still there. So that's two uses of that if. One to check a condition and push out to anyone using the sheet a text result. And the second here is to check the condition of a cell and then decide based on that condition whether it then goes ahead and carries out the formula we would like to see the result of. Still the same semantics, still the same layout. Equals if, open brackets, your condition, comma, what to happen if the condition is met, comma, what to happen if the condition is not met. That's fairly straightforward. Obviously, as we progress through, these if statements will get more long-winded and more complicated, but they will still be made up of the three sections. Condition, true, false. So no matter how long they get or how convoluted or how nested they get, you will still see that every if has three bits, a condition, a true section and a false section.